Hey and welcome, I'm Laura Live Namastram Yoga. Join me for another Vinyasa Yoga home practice. Great, so welcome. If you're new to my channel, thank you so much for being here. We're gonna do a Vinyasa flow practice today. Um, it's not going to be minimal cues exactly, but this is going to probably be maybe a level two class. So I'm going to assume you have some knowledge of yoga and the poses. So I'll only give alignment when I feel like it's really crucial or critical or with something that's maybe a little bit out of the ordinary. But generally, I'm going to figure you understand how to get into things like a warrior two or a triangle pose. So let's just sit for just a brief moment. And this is really just to check in with ourselves and see how we're feeling. So that as we move into our practice, we have our starting point. We know where we're at. And then once you kind of get a sense of where you're at at this point in your day, you might choose an intention that can help to shape your practice as you go through it. So my job is to offer you a suggestions in terms of the poses and the sequencing we're going to do, but then the way in which you practice is kind of up to you. So you can set an intention for yourself that will help guide you as we go through. All right, and then with that in mind, let's go ahead and come to hands and knees, tabletop position. We'll do a few cat-cow stretches. I always like to do some warm-up work before launching into sun salutations, although sun salutations really are a full-body warm-up. I feel like sometimes we just kind of need to check in with some simple things to start. And you can start to build in your ujjayi breath here as well. All right, and then leveling out, let's go ahead and take the right arm out and the left leg back. Extend, pull the navel up, and then exhale, curl in. Inhale, reach out. Exhale, tuck in. Inhale, and exhale. One more inhale to lengthen, and then if you want to bend the knee on your exhale, reach back with your hand for your foot. Pull up and away. All right, hand and knee down and let's go for the other side. Left arm, right leg. And contract as you exhale, extend as you inhale. Couple more rounds. And then this time reach out and you could hold or if you're able to reach that foot with the hand, find your way into a little bow stretch. And then walking the hands a little bit forward on the mat, bend the elbows, lower the heart between the hands. Let's bend both knees and take a bow stretch, this time both feet. You can keep the thighs on the floor to keep it kind of easy on this first back bend. Release your feet, hands next to your chest. Roll up into cobra, tops of the feet on the floor. And downward facing dog. First down dog, always checking in with your limbs, your joints, seeing how things feel. Let yourself warm up the legs here perhaps.
And then let's walk the feet to the top of the mat, coming to a standing forward fold, just a simple dangling. Release your elbows, bend your knees to roll up to standing. Shoulders back at the top. Ah, let's reach the arms out and up. Exhale, swan dive forward over the legs. And then stepping the right foot back, runner's lunge. Reach through the back heel with the left knee over the ankle. And from here, plank pose. So plant the palms, move the left foot back to meet the right. From plank, lower chaturanga. Maybe take a breath just in this hovering. And then flip to the tops of the feet and move to up dog. Alternately, you can stick with cobra. Roll over the toes, lift the hips, downward facing dog, hold to breathe. And move the feet back to the top of the mat. Stepping, walking, hopping. Big toes touch, heels slightly apart. Ardha Uttanasana. And then exhale, full Uttanasana, forward fold. Root down with the feet, reverse swan dive to come up this time. And palms together in front of the heart. Inhale, reach the arms out and up. Exhale, Uttanasana. Now let's step the left foot back. Just a really quick runner's lunge before we move to plank and take the vinyasa, just to get a little stretch in the legs. And then uh, planting the palms, step to plank, lower chaturanga, inhale, upward facing dog, exhale, down dog, and this time maybe just one inhale. Exhale, step, walk, or hop forward, and we're just gonna keep the flow going right into sun A's. Half lift, Uttanasana, reverse the swan dive, palms together. Follow the pace of your own breath here. Inhale, reach the arms. Exhale, fold Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana, so maybe step back and lower or you can jump. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale, downward dog. One inhale. Exhale, step, walk, or hop forward. R to Uttanasana, to Uttanasana. Reverse the swan dive, and palms together. And let's take a few more of these. So like I said, this is a full body warm up. I'm gonna let you follow the pace of your own breath, so I'll stop cueing for the next few. Let's meet in the next down dog. So take your time getting there, but when you do, just let yourself hold.
Let's take the right leg into the air. Classic down dog split with square hips. Look forward, step forward for crescent pose. High lunge, knee over the ankle. Let's take the right hand down to the floor inside the right foot. Plant your palm shoulder against knee. Let your back heel pivot down and take your left arm up. And then just turning back to the floor, step to plank. Take a vinyasa, modified vinyasa, or you could skip the vinyasa entirely and just go straight to down dog if you prefer. Left leg up, square hip down dog split. We'll do the same thing second side. Look forward, step forward. High lunge, crescent pose. And left hand down inside the foot, shoulder against the knee if you can, so that you're really trying to open here. You're gonna pivot that back heel down. Forget about that. And then turn to the floor. Take that vinyasa if you want to. Inhale, looking forward, exhale. Move to the top of the mat. Ardha Uttanasana. Uttanasana. Let's take the hands behind the back, interlace fingers, shoulder blades onto the back. Reach the arms up and over. Fold towards your legs. Keeping the feet together, start to bend the knees over the toes. Belly still against your thighs, and then let the upper body come up. Keep the hands behind the back, tuck the tail. Variation of chair pose, Utkatasana. Release the arms, bring them next to the ears, and then we're going to twist to the right. Left elbow outside of the right leg, press the palms. Standing on the right foot, step that left foot to the back of the mat for a high lunge, full twist. Maybe fly arms open, left outside of right leg. Float up, reach back if you can, look to your back heel. Left hand to the floor inside the right foot, shoulders stack. Easy twist. And when you're ready, transitioning to side plank on the left. Try to stabilize the upper body and just move the legs. Vinyasa. Making your way back to the top of the mat. Half lift and fold. Coming into chair pose. Let's go the other way. I'm going to flip to the other end of my mat. Right elbow outside of the left leg for that prayer twist. Standing on the left foot, shoot the right one back. Do the best you can with your balance in these transitions, maybe flying the arms open, but if that's too much, you can keep the palms pressed. Come
Come on up. Keep your twist. Maybe stretch back. Maybe left hand to the outer right thigh as you look to your back heel. Right hand down, left arm up. Stabilize through the shoulders. Roll to the edge of the right foot. Side plank. And vinyasa. Modify it if you need to, skip it if you want to. You'll see me modifying from time to time. Listen to your body. Look to the front of the mat. Inhale, exhale, step walker, hop. Half lift, fold. Let's take chair pose just for one breath. We're gonna go right back into vinyasa and go into a sun B. We'll take this one a little slower and that we'll hold our warrior one because it'll be our first warrior one. From down dog, inhale the right leg up. Exhale to bring it forward. Back heel lowers. Set up your warrior one and we'll take a few breaths here this first time through just to kind of establish the alignment. Give yourself a chance to deepen the pose. And then let yourself travel through vinyasa, one breath per movement to get back to down dog. And we'll do the other leg. Inhale it up. Exhale, left foot forward. Inhale, warrior one, alignment first. You know, check in with feet, knee, hips, shoulders, arms, head. And then vinyasa, so keeping it simple here. Let's inhale, look forward again. Exhale, step, walk, or hop. Half lift. Fold Uttanasana. Inhale, Utkatasana. One full sun B at the pace of the breath. Make your way back to down dog. And then one breath per movement as we go to warrior one on each side. Breathing to rest in down dog. Always an option to bring knees to the floor and take a child's pose. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, step, walk, or hop the feet. Half lift and fold. Chair pose. Let's hold for a moment in Utkatasana. Knees over toes. And then, standing on the right foot, let's uh, palms together and let's pick up the left foot, cross the ankle onto the thigh. Keeping the gaze up and forward. From here, we're gonna fold down. Let your chest come to your shin. Keep bending the right knee. You should feel a little hip glute stretch on the left. Let's go to half moon from here. So take the right fingers down to the floor under the shoulder. And then as we kind of turn open to the left, the left leg comes off the right one and extends behind the left arm, shoots up. Try to get the shoulders aligned so that when the arms become vertical, everything is stacked. 
and then bend the front knee. We're gonna step all the way back to warrior two. So line up the back arch with the front heel, front knee stays over ankle, level out the hips and then arms at shoulder height. Turn the front palm up, take a couple breaths in a reverse warrior. And vinyasa. Skip or modify if you want. Inhale, look forward, exhale, step, walk, or hop. Half lift, fold, Uttanasana. Chair pose, Utkatasana. Same thing, other side. So palms together, that right ankle is gonna cross onto the left thigh, sink the hips down. Keep the torso upright at first, finding your balance. And then fold for the stretch, which might make the balance a little easier, actually. And then left fingers down, opening to your half moon pose, Ardha Chandrasana. Bending the front knee, land your back foot right into place for warrior two. Adjust your alignment if you need to and breathe. Reverse warrior. And vinyasa. Breathe. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, step, walk, or hop the feet. Half lift and fold. Chair pose, Utkatasana. This time we're gonna go to Eagle Pose. So take the arms out. Let's do the arms first. Uh, we're gonna do left under right, lift the elbows, and then left leg over right, cross the thighs. Another balance pose transition. So we're gonna to go to a variation of warrior three. So unwind your left leg, push it back behind you. You can keep the arms wound if you like, reaching the fingers forward as you extend your left leg behind you. And then bending the front knee, reach for the back of the mat, land your heel for warrior one, keep your arms wound, lunge forward, lift up. Open the heart. Unwind the arms. Open warrior two. Adjust your back foot, of course. Inhale, reverse warrior. And then let's take extended side angle. Forearm to the thigh if you want, or you could take your fingers to the floor. Stretch back, reverse, and good old vinyasa. Breathe here and then looking to the top of the mat on an inhale, exhale, step, walk, or hop forward. Half lift, fold, Uttanasana, chair pose, Utkatasana, and eagle pose, Garudasana. Starting with the arms, right under left, lift elbows, and then right over left with the legs. Good. 
Moving to variation of warrior three. Bend the front knee, step back. Variation of warrior one. Unwind the arms, open out warrior two. Inhale, reverse, and extended side angle. Classic standing pose. Find your alignment, connect to your breath. And reverse warrior, stretch back, hands to the floor, travel through vinyasa, back to down dog. Couple of resting breaths here. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, step walk or hop to the top of the mat. Half lift, fold, chair, utkatasana, straighten the legs, and then let's just step out wide for prostrate padottanasana. Hands to the waist, nice wide legged forward fold. Hands to the floor when you're ready, lean in. Hands to the waist, float back up. Right toes open for triangle, trikonasana. Come on up. Stretch back, and we're going to float into dancer pose. So look forward, right hand forward. Keep the left hand behind you to pick up the back leg as you come up. Oop, I'm out of room. And standing split. And if you want to hold on to the foot as you go into it, feel free. And then eventually let go and fold towards the right leg. Back foot down for pyramid, keeping both legs straight, just fold into it. And then let's take a quick revolve triangle here. Feet are already in position, so just lengthen your torso and uh, twist it. Turning to the floor, good old vinyasa. Looking forward, make your way back to the top of the mat. From Uttanasana, let's just reverse swan dive, come on up. Step out wide for second variation on prasrita. We'll take hands behind the back and interlace fingers. Folding down. Mm -hmm. 
Root down with the feet to rise back up. Take the left toes open for triangle trikonasana. And come on up, stretch back, and remember we're going into dancer pose now on the left side. Do your best to find that balance and the lift. Standing split, maybe hanging on to that left, uh, lifted foot as you transition the left fingers to the floor. And then allow yourself to fully go to your standing split when you're ready. Float the right foot down behind you, pyramid pose. Try to keep those hips level. They tend to not want to be so, but do your best. And then maybe lifting up and lengthening a little bit to, self, to support yourself as you move into revolve triangle. Left arm up. And turning to the floor, step back vinyasa. Look forward, inhale, exhale, step walk or hop, half lift, fold, reverse the swan dive, come all the way up. And we're going to do a little bit of handstand practice here. So if you have a wall nearby that you can use, I encourage you to find a way to utilize it. Um, I'm going to start with box pose though, so that I can get a little bit of time um, just sort of practicing the alignment without the balance. Um, so for this, I know most of you probably already know this, but sit near the wall so that you can measure out the length of your legs. You want your hands now to end up where your heels are so that when the legs are in the air, we can have our hips directly over our shoulders and our hands. So trying to use that alignment. Remember, the leg length does not change once our legs get in the air, so you have to really trust this measurement. I always like to think of coming to a little mini down dog here, moving my heart back to help me walk the feet up the wall so that there's some traction. Having your mat there is going to help a lot. Only walk the feet as high as the hips, and then push the heels to the wall and straighten the legs to move. The, sh the hips over the shoulders. And then you can play with lifting the legs one at a time, really nice and slow, trying to get vertical. Take your time, but then come down when you are ready to come down. You can keep practicing there, or you can turn around towards the wall to practice kicking up into some handstands. And we'll just take maybe a minute or so here. Uh, so hands slightly away from the wall so that if you're not gonna ricochet yourself back off the wall as soon as you try to kick up. You can take the same approach, little mini down dog, but then do bring the shoulders forward over the wrists before you try to launch yourself. One leg up, swing leg, bottom leg kicks you off. That's your spring leg. Little hops, you can just practice hops. If you've got enough momentum to get to the wall, heels to the wall, but not hips. Push down and then trying to kind of use your heels maybe to move the hips over the shoulders. So you can get your torso vertical and then ideally the legs just float up above that really strong central torso. Try again. Make sure you're kicking up on both sides or trying to kick up with both legs. Which side did I do? Take 
take your time if you want a few more seconds. Give it to yourself when you're ready to be done. Let's take a good padahastasana. So sliding your hands underneath your feet, toes to wrists. And then bending the knees. You can take your hands out from underneath your feet. Let's just come to a squat. Hold on to your shins. And then drop your hips down. Let's roll back to the floor. Legs in the air just for a moment. Maybe give them a little kick out. Woohoo. And then uh, bend your knees. Uh, hips slightly away from the heels. Actually, let's go ahead, lift the hips and sit on the backs of the hands. Legs in the air. Let's just do a little bit of core work here. I like to throw this in sometimes. The important thing here, and part of the reason why the hands are under the hips, is to tilt the pelvis a little so the low back is against the ground. So if your low back is kind of hiking up away from the floor, push it down. Use your abdominal muscles to keep it down. And then right leg slowly lowers towards the ground. No momentum, don't give in to gravity. And then slowly returns up to meet the left. And then the other leg, left. Keep that low back against the ground. So moving the legs is actually uh, an obstacle keep for keeping that low back down. So we're giving ourselves the obstacle and then working against it. So we're really trying to work the abdominals there. Now, if this is too easy and you're like, this is boring, both legs. Slow. Don't use momentum. Their heels should never completely come to the floor. Bring them up slow. If you feel like your low back is, you know, arching up away from the floor when you do this, go back to one leg at a time. And now, if you're doing double legs, two more. If you're doing single legs, one more each side. And then bend the knees, place the feet on the floor, slightly away from the hips. Get your hands out from underneath your hips and start to lift the hips up off the floor. Let's take bridge pose here. Roll your shoulders underneath you. And then move the shoulders out of the way so you can slowly return your spine to the floor. One vertebra at a time, nice and easy. Take about two breaths. So we don't want to give ourselves too much time to completely give up the ghost as we wait for our next back bend. So then just go into it. If you want to take another bridge, great. Wheel, hands next to the ears, elbows towards the sky. Roll first to the top of the head. Plug your shoulders in, turn your toes in. Straighten the limbs to come up. When you're ready to come down, if you're in wheel, tuck the chin, lower to the back of the head, and coming all the way down. Straighten out the left leg, pull the right knee in, and then use the left hand to pull it across the body for a twist. Turn your head away from your leg. And switch sides. Left knee in, right leg out, twisting, other way. And knees back in, let's roll shoulders to hips. 
rolling through the spine. Hopefully this feels good. If it does not, you can skip it. Let's roll to a boat pose. So finding Navasana here. And then feet to the floor, reverse table. Shoulders plug into the back, press the feet down. Hips, try to get them as high as the knees, chin in or head back. And then lower the hips down. One more boat pose. If you'd like, reach for the feet. Push the feet into the hands. You could also grab big toes here. Heart to legs, legs to heart. Keep your balance. And then take the legs open wide. Bend the knees, bring the feet in, Baddha Konasana. Okay, so bring the knees back in and let's just uh, roll onto our feet so we can get our hands to the floor. Back to down dog. If you want to take a vinyasa, you absolutely can. If you don't want to, just down dog. We're going to set up for a pigeon stretch. Let's take the right leg up, open the hip and bend the top knee. So take a moment to really get a nice stretch for the front of that thigh as the knee reaches for the ceiling. And then move your knee forward behind the right wrist. Set up the pose for yourself. If you need to modify, you can come to your back. If you need to support your hip with a block, you can certainly grab something to help you with that. And then just let yourself fold. And we'll take um, a number of breaths here. Try to stay with your ujjayi, but try to let the weight of your body go. And then supporting yourself with your hands to come up. Let's do a quad stretch for the left leg. Maybe your right fingers support you as you bend the knee and reach back for the foot. Feel free to take variations here. So maybe you're moving your hand to your thigh or finding some balance. Maybe mermaid pose here. And then let that go back to down dog. If you need to, you can shake out your right leg or kick through the heel a little bit. And we'll do the other side. Left leg up, open the hip and bend the knee. And move the knee forward. Set up for your pigeon. Try to mirror what you did on the first side so that we're treating our body symmetrically as best we can. Okay, and come up. Let's do the other side for our quad stretch. Again, try to take the same version that you did on the first side.
And let it go when you're ready. Stepping back to down dog. Shake out left leg or kick through the heel. Let's do one more little twist. So walk the feet just a little closer to the hands so that it's possible to take your left hand and reach for the outer right calf. And then just twisting under your arm. And switching sides, left hand down, right hand to left leg. And then hands down, walk the feet forward. Let's come to a seat. Take the legs out straight. Give them a little shake. And then inhale, reach the arms out and up. Exhale, dive forward. We're gonna do this a couple of times. So then just see if you can kind of like roll back up like as if you were coming up from a forward fold. Reach the arms. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, reach out. By all means, grab your plant. <laughs> Exhale, fold. One more time, inhale, and exhale. This time, we're going to stay in Paschimottanasana for probably about 10 breaths. And then take your time when you're ready, come on up. So let's come to a seated cross-legged position. Um, at this point, it's actually preferential that you go into Shavasana, but I'm gonna let you do that on your own. Just lay on your back, let go of the weight of your body, give in to gravity and enjoy some stillness. But I wanna end with you before that point, just so that you then have the freedom to take as long of a Shavasana as you like. So let's just bring palms together in front of the heart, close the eyes, tune into the breath. Notice how you're feeling now as you prepare to end your practice. And we'll acknowledge each other with a simple bow forward. The light in me recognizes and honors the light in you. Namaste. All right, well, thank you so much for practicing with me today. Uh, if you enjoyed the practice, do give it a thumbs up so that I know. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those as well. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I hope that you will join me. And that's it. Take care and hope to see you again next time. Bye-bye.